Hello, my name is David Shreen, and today I'm going to be talking about the Biberry Philadelphia State Hospital. So, how many people are, I guess, how many people do you think are diagnosed each year in America with mental illness? You don't have to say it out loud, but just think in your head, like, how many people? It's actually one out of five people are diagnosed with mental illness every day. And about 43 million people are treated each year with mental illness. And that's not including children as well. So, in the 20th century, you know, there wasn't a lot of medical advances yet, so we kind of, you know, had a bunch of mental illness coming, a bunch of immigration as well. So, as, as you can see, our population was definitely booming. So, the first idea they had was the Byberry Farms, which was used to actually treat uh, tuberculosis patients. And they basically wanted people to do is back then they didn't really know how to like treat tuberculosis yet; they didn't have a cure for it. So they do what a thing called the fresh air treatment. And most of these people in these state hospitals are poor. Like they don't have money to like help themselves. So basically what they did is they made them work in like really what they call fresh air while they have tuberculosis. So not only are you suffering from this horrible disease, but now you have to go out to a field and go work because they think it makes you healthy. So that actually started in 1903. And then in 1907, the actually Philadelphia State Hospital became what it is. And that got funding from the mayor of Philadelphia itself at the time because he was running for office and he was actually trying to get rid of all the poor and the insane people. So basically if, he, basically if you're homeless, they thought you had a mental illness because you're already homeless, so they threw you up in this mental hospital. And the mental hospital itself was uh, comprised of two dorms for one woman, one uh, man, and each of them had their own infirmary, dining hall, uh, laundry, and then I know they also had two dorms called the incurables for both the male and females, so like people who were just Looney crazy who just they yeah we can't fix you yeah they threw him up in there so it actually got its first patient was William McCain and he actually went in there for the treatment of alcohol so that's how he started and then it started falling apart um, the Philadelphia city itself didn't want to keep funding um, the program it was losing money um, like I said overpopulation and then um, lack of poor management just over time they weren't getting the money to hire people like you could be an ex felon a drunk or someone just off the street and you could just come in and work for them. So, Mac Parker was a photographer at the time who was really, uh, how would you say, innovative. So, he went out and actually disguised himself as one of the attendants in the hospital to photograph the harsh conditions they were all living with. So, as you can see, they didn't even have enough money for clothes or shoes, and the most of the time, like in a bathroom, like they're suffocating with like drunk PCs and stuff. So, it's pretty gross treatment of how like, they kept people. So. They actually opened up the public's eyes for the first time, like, wow, these, we don't want to send like, our family members to these hospitals, like, they're bad for you. So, they closed it down, and they reopened it back in 1938, uh, two years later, actually, so it wasn't closed <coughs> down for long. They wanted to make it more uh, humane, I guess, so they added, uh, this is actually a picture from the hospital, and they added a bowling alley for the people to play with. Um, I know they added like, a swimming pool, more recreational stuff to kind of get them you know, happy, not just throw them in out of it. <coughs> And then World War II happened, and the primary people that worked at the hospital were men. So where did men have to go when World War II happened? They had to go fight for it. So the only people left at this point were pacifists, who against their religion would not let them fight, and women. Now, I'm not saying women could care less or are less caring than men, but when you know men have to strap down a really big, crazy guy, I don't think women are gonna, you know, are gonna need like five of you to try and help out. So. Again, overpopulation was another thing, um, as well as increased diagnosis of mental illnesses. Because of the war and people getting drafted, they actually were examining people a lot more for their mental health, and a lot more diagnoses that came out because of the war. Um, and again, it actually closed its source finally, not until 1990. So again, like about 40 years after like, it started coming bad, they uh, failed multiple health inspections, and then they finally closed the doors for good. And my question is, like, should we still have institutions today? Yes, they were bad, and they treated people horribly, but, I mean, we really don't have a place for, you know, homeless people or drunks. So, statistic-wise, an estimated 26% of homeless people staying in shelters. Um, you can read the numbers. I mean, going all the way down, like, it's just nowadays, like, people don't really have anywhere to go but jail. So, if you have a mental health issue and you're basically poor, then that could be from alcoholism to being a drug addict, then you're basically just going to get thrown in the pen. So. Thank you, and uh, I hope you take away from this on if um, health institutions should still be.